Now, the other issue with the Saunders and Vautier principle is what if the beneficiaries don't have a fixed interest? Instead, they are discretionary beneficiaries. So the trustees must consider them as objects of getting the payments or receiving a benefit from the trust. But the trustees aren't compelled to give the money over to that that beneficiary. These are really common um, and it's often for tax reasons. Um, so if you have a fixed interest in a trust, the government is much more likely to tax you on the value of that trust because it's it's essentially your money and you have this Saunders and Vautier ability to, to call it in and reunite the legal and the equitable interest. So discretionary benef- discretionary trusts are used quite a lot because that way the tax man can't say, well, this is effectively your property. I know it's held by the trustees. Um, and so you say, no, 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 the trustees might choose to give it to me, but they might choose to give it to this range of other people. And the settler doesn't have control of that and the beneficiary doesn't have control of that. Now, with a Saunders and Vautier principle, if all of the discretionary beneficiaries, beneficiaries get together, they can say to the trustees, we want you to transfer the the trust property, the legal interest in the trust property to us and split it all equally. And they can all get together and do that. Um, and if, let's say, it's the brother and sister and the brother and sister have actually decided that the trustees aren't very good and the trustees have discretionary power, um, then the brother and sister can say, actually, we want to split it 50-50 and they can sort of take the, they can get together and they can take the trustees to court and say, we want it transferred to us 50-50. Yes, you have the discretion to transfer it 70-30 to us or 80-20 or however you saw fit, but we've decided we're going to split it equally amongst ourselves. That situation is probably more likely to happen than where you know, you have a lot of discretionary beneficiaries and, and in the next chapter we'll talk about uh, where there's a very lot, the problems where there's a very large class of, of discretionary beneficiaries um, and problems with identifying them. But in, in that situation, um, technically the beneficiaries could call on the trustees to transfer the property to them in equal shares. Might not be that likely to happen. Now the reason that this is is because if you think about it, we think about this sort of back to the ownership and we split it into legal and equitable rights. With a fixed trust, the rights that the beneficiary have are for the trustees to to use the the property in, in a way that benefits them specifically. But a discretionary beneficiary as a whole, all of the discretionary beneficiaries have a right to ensure that the trustees, say, invest prudently or and keep trust accounts and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But each individual beneficiary just has the right in equity to be duly considered, to be properly considered and to be fairly considered under the terms of the trust as having a distribution or income paid to them. And that, that's the difference. And that's why a discretionary beneficiary can't just take their portion. If there's five discretionary beneficiaries, can't go to the court by yourself and say, I want a fifth of this. Because the trustees had the ability not to give you that fifth. They could have given you half. They could have given you nothing at all. That depends on what the trust says and, and under what circumstances they're meant to be exercising their, their discretion. And, and that's why discretionary beneficiaries don't have that same Saunders and Vautier rights individually but together they do but actually a discretionary beneficiary just has the right to compel the trustees to give them fair consideration so for example if you know the bright let's say the father dies and he leaves the the income of the farm on trust for so the rental income of the farm on trust for the brother and the sister and the trustee is the aunt or his sister so the brother and the sister's aunt, and the aunt much prefers her niece to her nephew, the nephew has a right as a discretionary beneficiary to compel his aunt to give a disinterested and, and proper thought to how she's going to distribute the money or the rental income. Um, she can't just be capricious and give it all to her niece because she prefers her niece. So that's the difference between a fixed and a, a discretionary beneficiary's rights.